One thing that has always amazed me is a, many customers, they have an idea for a new product, they do all their experimentation, they produce all their tooling, they make all their molds, and they say, well, let's leave a certain amount of space for the spring. Well, they make all their tools, they get their components all made, then they, they design the spring thinking they have the right spring. We get it, and we look at it, we analyze it, and we know darn well this thing isn't going to work. However, this is what they want. So now they get the spring, they put it in their product, it doesn't work. Hi, my name is George Fournier. I work for Acme Monocle Corporation and my position there is Vice President of Engineering. Today, we're going to teach you how to make a better spring. There are four basic types of springs. The first and the, probably the most popular uh, are the compression springs. Well, the compression spring is a device that uh, has a length, a free length, and what happens is you press down on it and it, it produces a resultant force and that force causes some reaction that causes something else to happen to make that product work the way it's supposed to work. Now an extension spring is just the opposite. An extension spring is close one in the middle with two hooks on the ends and it's fastened and when you pull on it that produces a force. Uh, for instance an example of an extension spring is on a screen door. When you open a screen door there's a spring that brings it back. That's an extension spring. And then the third spring that we manufacture are torsion springs. Now they're a little different because those use a rotational type movement that produces a torque which transmits a, a force sideways. And then finally we have a beam spring and a cantilever spring. And those basically are made out of a flat material, spring tempered, and picture, if you don't really understand what a beam spring is, picture parked underneath a bridge. And you've got a beam that goes from one side to the other. That's considered a beam spring. And what it does is it, it uh, holds the bridge up and it's able to absorb any weight that's put on it. Okay, now we're in the design phase. And there's certain things you have to look for when you start to design a spring. You have to know, number one, what you want. You have to know what it's going to do, where it fits. So the first thing you have to consider is the material. You know, where is it going to work, at what temperature. Uh, one of the most popular materials that we use in spring manufacturing is music wire. That's a high carbon steel, and it's probably the best material that offers the best spring qualities. If you need the stress levels that the spring could produce, but it's in a corrosive atmosphere, you can do a plating, with a chromate finish that offers excellent resistance to saw sprays and, and things like this. The second most popular is the 302, 304 stainless steels. Now, this is perfect if you have a corrosive atmosphere. They're a little bit more expensive to produce because of the material, but they offer excellent corrosion resistance. Also, uh, if you get into high cycle applications, for instance, uh, valve springs. Uh, in, in automobile engines. Those things cycle thousands of times a minute and they have to be able to stand the heat and they have to be able to stand the stresses. Okay, another thing to consider when, when you're designing a spring is you have to consider the temperature at which it works. As the temperature increases, the force at a certain height decreases by a certain percentage. So what you have to do is know exactly how to design that spring at its working temperature. Once that is done, you take those values and you recalculate based on what it would be at the ambient room temperature, so that way you can come up with numbers so you can actually inspect it at room temperature, knowing that at the working temperature, it will work as desired. There are some materials uh, like Inconel X750 that you can go up to 1100 degrees Fahrenheit, because some applications require that. Uh, items that use music wire shouldn't go above 250 degrees Fahrenheit. The other problem with elevated temperatures is if the stresses on the spring are too high, you'll get premature corrosion in the grain boundaries, which would cause premature failure. So you have to be careful, not only temperature-wise, but you have to worry about the stress levels at that temperature. Most people think springs are just springs, but believe it or not, springs are a very, very accurate component. Many people don't realize this. 
While springs are often the least expensive part of your assembly, failure can bring costly machine downtime and product rejects. To assure higher quality and longer reliability, we offer a comprehensive spring design and analysis program which evaluates physical and mechanical requirements, manufacturing feasibility, and in-use predictability. We are experts in compression, extension, torsion, and beam springs.